Good afternoon. Good. We did. Uh, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> good afternoon. Good evening. Good night. It's My name is John. My name is Arvin. It has been a while, and this is bit. behind the scenes of our best days. Season seven. Season seven. Isn't that wild. We've been friends that long. Yeah, dude. Seven seasons. Well, I think we became friends season four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's right that's right that's right <laughs> we actually hated each other the first no first true season. it was weird because i worked for him and he was just really really uh like mean <laughs> really like, mean yeah just really like rude me. i'd push him down the stairs yeah dude. and but then, i was like no but i'm earning like you get it like I'm yeah paying yeah my yeah he, you were like i'm joseph in the pit yeah 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 it's <laughs> funny when we say it but that's how corporate america works we're just kidding oh, okay tough. but basically we are friends cody do you want a chair there's a chair here. Yeah. Introducing Cody Applegate. Our Cody new producer. Applegate is a new producer on the show. Yeah. Yeah. And he's really, really uh, awesome. Yes. And okay, Cody, can you come around here and just wave into the camera? Yeah, buddy. Cody actually um, started out as an intern in our creative department. Was it seven years ago? The first time, seven years ago, he interned. He did graphic design. He was kind of feeling, um, not physically, but like emotionally, he was feeling <laughs> um, this girl named Samantha. Yeah. And she is was over our social media and prod squad photography. You know, it's like behind the scenes kind of rom-com yeah. stuff. Yeah, meet fast, cutes. Fast forward. Oh, yeah. They are now married. Yeah, absolutely. So literally... God is working behind the scenes on your yeah, love life. You never know. You never know. You never know. So get involved in uh, service and dream team. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that know. is a great plug for those of you who guy. For those of you who say, "What is this podcast? Why should I be listening? Why have you guys not given up after seven <laughs> seasons?" Because I enjoy listening to them. Do I enjoy? I post it? them. I listen to them. I like them. Yeah, I do too. I'll remember later on. I go, oh yeah, we talked about that. That's fantastic. yes. Okay, well. We just to a, a, a refresher. Yeah. Those of you who have been following us for all this time, you'll you're gonna get tired of it. But we see you and we notice you and we love you. So uh, buckle up and help, hold on. So <laughs> this this podcast is at Victory Church. Mm -hmm. We get to serve on the creative team. How many? What do we do throughout a year? Twelve. Oh, months. okay. So we do the three large scale productions: Christmas, Easter, and fall film. Um, and we just finished with something. We just finished Christmas. And we're no, no. I oh, mean, you mean another thing. event? Oh, yeah, the event, the Super Bowl of our year is Victory Conference. Victory Conference just January. happened a few weeks ago, January yeah. 2024. We're recording this in January 2024, um, and we had so many awesome speakers. But anyways, we're involved in that, and then our week to week services at That's different right. campuses. Yeah. Victory is an entity that has a camp. Two Dream Centers, which is a place of outreach, helping low-income people get back on their feet. Yeah. Um, it has a school, pre-K through 12, a Bible college, yeah. and then our campuses. Yes, absolutely. They operate at both ends of the economic spectrum, helping it people is, on both sides. It's fun. Absolutely. So anyways, but we currently finished with conference. Yeah. And one thing that you said, Ooh. we're just going to do a quick recap and then we're going to get into it, but we had, who were the guest speakers? We had... The pr privilege of hearing from our own pastor, Paul Doherty, who we love very much. Yes. We heard from Bob Goff. Bob Goff, who is kind of like Mr. Rogers yeah. meets crack cocaine. Yeah. He's a lot of energy, but very, very... We uh, don't do crack, no, FYI. nor cocaine. Nor, none of that. Neither of them. Uh, but he's very kind and playful and kind of grandpa vibe. But then he'll say things that... You go, wow, that's really profound or really beautiful or yeah. important to pay, pay attention to. Yeah, no, he has a great perspective on God. That's right. That's and right. Heaven. And you just want to you want to operate your life of faith in a way that resembles him, which is beautiful. Yeah. Then we had uh, Sammy Rodriguez. Sammy Rodriguez. Absolutely. People love him. And then uh, Keon Henderson, Pastor Keon Henderson from Houston, from Texas. From Houston. Yeah, love that one. And then we had... Bill Johnson from, from Bethel, Bethel. finish out conference. Yeah, and what about who was your favorite one? Or who was your least favorite? Just kidding. That's Don't hilarious. say that. Don't yeah. say that. <laughs> 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 no, I really enjoyed uh, Bill Johnson in particular. It was very in-depth. He gave, he said things in such a, he's describing in incredibly complex ideas in a way that is absolutely simple and approachable, low barrier to entry to understand and I really appreciate you can't really do that you can't fake that I don't think no what he communicated mm -hmm. because he lost his wife recently mm -hmm. 
and that's public knowledge. Like we're not just reading. No, he talked that about it. Spot. He's talked about it. He's absolutely. talked about it. Yeah. But like one of his messages, he he spoke multiple times. So much wisdom. You can tell the man has been in the presence of God. Yeah, absolutely. Like I'm like, okay, he is a prayer. He's a man of yeah. prayer. Yes, absolutely. You can just tell. Yeah. The yeah. way he communicates and the yeah. way he comes across. He always starts off with jokes. Yeah. Hilarious. And, and here's it's the so thing. Deadpan funny. face. Yeah. Yeah. Dad vibe. <laughs> just dad jokes. joke vibe. Yeah. And then we'll chuckle. Yeah. And then he will go. So many believers leave the faith because of two things. They right. don't know how to handle resentment and they don't know how to handle disappointment. Yeah. Today I'm going to talk about how to handle disappointment. Yeah. And, and you're, you're just going, like, whoa, whoa, buckle up. Here yeah. we go. Yeah. And then he yeah. just dives in deep in the word 100%. of God yeah. and what the presence of God does it. And I just, so like he's vulnerable talking about how to deal with disappointment as a, as a believer. Yeah. Yeah. And then he's talking about his own story. Totally. Very and it's good. just so fresh. Yeah. And then, but then he talks about the grace of God and the Holy spirit and how it comes and just gives you grace during that time. And you're like, yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, absolutely. It's just, yeah. yeah. So it's awesome. So we're grateful. Yeah. Very grateful. You can always tell, uh, Good speakers from great speakers, because a good speaker, you hear them and you go, wow, I'd like to know more about him or her. A great speaker, at least in the church context, when you hear them speak, you go, I really want to go spend time alone with God. Mm. There's a big, big difference. That's true. The good ones are still great. Like they're good, great people and all that. I'm not whatever. And I'm not naming anybody anyway, but I'm saying in general, I really know. I really appreciate the ones that afterward i'm like and maybe that's a thing for each person maybe it's not about them at all maybe they're all great speakers and it's just that some of them make me the, want to go yeah. spend time with god and others don't. who makes you not want to spend time with god <laughs> <laughs> yeah just exactly. kidding no no no, no, no. um no that would be that's the funny. gloves would come off after that just kidding yeah um <laughs> <laughs> the gloves that were not wearing <laughs> i go who's got gloves what's who's going on gloves? who showed up with boxing gloves <laughs> that's hilarious okay well <laughs> this being <laughs> this being season seven yeah thinking about whenever we started we kind of started around this time currently like in about three days we begin filming for easter 2024 yeah I leave later today to go get stuff ready at the first film set. Oh, my God. So I'll, after this episode, I'm going to drive out there and okay, get it ready. Okay, so some of you guys don't know this. So we just finished this Christmas production, which yeah. you can watch online. On YouTube, yeah. Yeah, it's called The Christmas Thread. That's right. Um, and we basically, uh, about seven years ago, God put it on the inside of our heart, like, write seven scripts, yeah. seven Christmas scripts, seven Easter scripts, and seven stories of of fall film yeah. and then begin to revisit those. Yeah. Well, we're on year, we're going on year 11. Yeah. So we are going back and revisiting scripts that were written in 2016 mm -hmm. and we're saying, okay, but what is the word of God saying now? Like, yeah. What is God saying now in 2024 to the people? Mm -hmm. And then we redo all of the songs. Yeah. And then we redo the script. Yeah. It sometimes has a similar taste. Sure. But a it premise. is a yeah. new story. Right. Right. Uh, so that's what we're doing. So this one for this Easter is called Proof. Yeah, absolutely. And we did this one in 2019. It was actually the last year that I played Jesus. Amazing. And yeah. that, and I knew it because I remember getting cleaned up after night one, <laughs> after being whipped and crucified. Yeah. And I said out loud, I go, this is the last time I'm going to. Yeah. <laughs> and the makeup girls go, oh, no, 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 no. You, you have six more. You have yeah. seven more services. Yeah. Yeah. And I go, oh, I, I mean, next year. Yeah. Like, like, this is it. Yeah. But I was like <laughs> super beat up. I yeah. remember catching a whip. Yeah. Which is such a funny sentence to no, say. No, sure. Sure. <laughs> it, 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 you know. <laughs> yeah. I caught a whip in the corner of my eye Ow. and it got stuck. And then the guy pulled it back Yo. and I I'm just gonna be honest yeah I cussed <laughs> I uh, no out of the abundance of the heart the yeah. mouth speaks yeah I realized I <laughs> needed to go to the altar because mm -hmm. Jesus cussed now thank God it was during a dress rehearsal <laughs> yeah but everyone there heard incredible me. sure sure it was bad news yeah sure and then the guy that whipped <laughs> me just stopped and he was like I I'm so sorry. And Ryan Stafford goes, keep going <laughs> yeah. because it was mid song. Yeah. 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 And he I wanted to like, time it. Right. <laughs> it was, 
So that's got to be – there needs to be a con- conference of all the guys that have played Jesus over the years. And just calling them and up. And all of them just talking and about – And seeing where they're at now in their walk with God. Totally. Wait, what's, yeah, no, sure. <laughs> what's the worst thing that happened while you were doing that? Because sometimes we partner with the, the folks at the Great Passion Play. And yeah. Ken the great Butler pa- So the Great Jesus Passion there. Play is a place that actually does – the story yeah. of the gospel, and it's in the Ozark Mountains. Yeah, beautiful of Arkansas. amphitheater outdoor. You can Google it. It, yeah. and it has like, um, okay, what's Rio de Janeiro? The yeah, Jesus? The, the big Jesus. The big Jesus <laughs> in Brazil. I don't know what they it's have called. a miniature version of yeah, this. Yeah, it's really funny. In <laughs> Eureka Springs, Arkansas. It's true. Yeah, it is such a weird place. It's like. New Age, like yeah. if you, the actual town is like a New Age mountain town. Very interesting vibe. Yeah, and um. <laughs> You know, like uh, a lot of Subarus. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's okay to say it's the it is the lesbian capital of the United States. It's, it's the lesbian famous for capital being the of place America. Where, uh, women who and are <laughs> lesbians they get together, I'm, and, that's and we're not where making they, like no it, but it is unique that that is the place. Yeah, in that town. Yeah, you have that. And you have these new age shops where you can buy, you know, mood rings and dream catchers and, yeah. and crystals. And uh, yeah. and then <laughs> one mile down the road is a this massive amphitheater Jesus. of a gigantic yeah. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is bizarro That's world. Right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you guys should just visit just sure. to be like, where are we? Yeah, it is like a little you feel like you're on the set of like Harry Potter. Yeah, it's just a different. And then not that I would know, mom and dad. Yeah, (laughs) and then they have a biblical walkthrough. Yeah, that can take you to the holy of holies. Yes, that's right. It is. (laughs) It's really cool. Anyways, so uh, long story short, sorry. No, my bad. We we worked with them. Yeah, we filmed there often, and um, yeah, it's just fun to. To meet the guy. The The guy guy who runs it also plays Jesus. His name is Kent Butler. He's a sweetheart. And he's been so kind to us over the Dude, years. Dude, Kent looks like Jesus. He looks like Jesus. Year round. He has to keep Year round. He has to he keep has it. He beard, long curly hair, but he's yeah. also super kind. I just think it, I've had this idea for a long time, and this is kind of derivative of what we're no, saying No, no, go for it. But there have all, been all these guys. I don't know if you'll find this funny. I think I, I, I find it funny. Um, there have been people all over the world. There's a few of them in South America. There's a guy in Siberia and like Russia who are like, I am the second coming of Jesus Christ. Like they're cult leaders. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I they had this idea. It. Yeah, I've, I've got this idea for a long time that we do a reality show where you bring all of them together and we, they compete to prove who the real Jesus is. And will we, what do we call it? Book of Revelations? Yeah, well, I don't know. Whatever you want to go ahead. I haven't named it yet. If you have naming rights, we can, or uh, ideas. I remember whenever my mom was whenever after my dad passed my mom stepped in as head pastor at victory she's praying over at the altar a, a man who's like six four walked uh, forward walked through the middle doors he had not been there through um through the service oh wow. walked through the middle doors from the lobby all the way straight down beeline towards my mom the ushers and security started walking towards it and he walked up to my mom and he goes i am the second coming of christ my name is jesus yeah and she goes no, you are not. Nice, and he goes, <laughs> okay. He tipped his hat to her. Oh, weird. Turned around and walked out. That's wild. Man. A cowboy hat. A six uh, foot four cowboy <laughs> goes, Jesus. Okay. No, literally. He was like, my name is Jesus. <laughs> that's just, that's how I want to end it is when the guy wins, when it's down to the last two, the guy who wins, we go, okay, you've won. We're going to crucify you. <laughs> <laughs> and if you resurrect in three days, dude, then you win the money. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, wow. It, I don't think it's sacrilegious. I think TBN should jump on this opportunity. Yeah. No, the producer at TBN, Tom yeah. Newman, we need your help. It's time, dude. It is time. I'm at, that, I want to, uh, maybe satirically, I want to make that show. I think that'd be funny. Yes. And again, we're not being sacrilegious. No, I love the but Lord. That I, talk, is I ask God about so, this. So, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. Him. You've talked about it. Yeah. God's like, yeah, really? I'm going going to flip tables <laughs> we were talking this morning about i used to make this joke with my wife where she would be like what'd you do today and i go oh i woke up i, I prayed i read my bible and uh god said he missed you so i feel so weird when i tell someone i prayed and read my bible so cody and i were talking about that and so immediately you want to make a joke that makes it fine but i will say that to people and i just thought about that too that is so interesting <laughs> he says so, he misses you and uh <laughs> Have you called them lately? Like, what's going on? <laughs> as far as far she as she would roll her eyes. Okay, 
So currently in 2024, it's already been exciting because there's things going on like yeah. uh, Taylor Swift is now playing for the NFL. Praise God, and, dude. It's about um, time. Yeah. Honestly, yes. Super Bowl Swift. I love it. Super Bowl Swift. Yeah. And girls need equal rights. That's right. <laughs> Play <Imagine> <laughs> the, <laughs> the WNFL. The t- I should. We should stop here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Anyways, no. So you have the Super Bowl. Yeah. We had conference. We're getting ready to go into Easter. Yes. And the thing that we are looking at as we, one of the unique things is Easter is casting the disciples um, for mm, Easter. Yeah. And whenever we're casting the disciples, I always love to go back and read through the gospels yeah. and kind of like think about each individual and why they do the things they did every from, from, uh, you know, Theophilus, not Theophilus, sure. um, Barnabas. Yeah. Uh, Peter, yeah. Judas, Thomas, sure. you John, know, and then those John, yeah. Matthew, Luke reading through and, and kind of figuring out and then placing people in those positions. Yeah. And then really, uh, and then as you begin thinking, these men did ministry for three years yeah. side by side. And then all of a sudden yeah. it was over and you have different people who were blue collar sure. that were fishermen. Yeah. And then you have guys that were like physicians sure, like Luke. Yeah. And then Matthew was tax, a tax collector. Tax, wealthy guy. Yeah. Yeah. And the fact that none of them were preachers. Right. Because Jesus didn't need a preacher. No, it's true. Yeah. He still doesn't. He still doesn't. But we're grateful. Wow. For, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but that is. And so as I'm looking through this, I'm like, man, just imagine the relational things with uh, the men hmm. and Jesus. And then you look at the women that funded Jesus's ministry. That's true. Yeah. So this upcoming this upcoming year, we're so excited because we're actually honing in on several names yeah. that helped fund Jesus's ministry. That's right. Yeah. And. So they are. So uh, part of that group is Mary Magdalene. Who Mary Magdalene, Jesus, who was set free from, from demons. demons, prostitution, all this stuff. And then uh, <laughs> there's a group. It's in Luke chapter eight. If you look at it, it's Joanna, whose husband is Herod's CFO. So hold on. Let's slow down. Sure. Uh, so Joanna. Yeah. Joanna. Her husband is King Herod's chief financial officer. Chief financial, o- but yeah, yeah, she's following Jesus. Yeah, she's funding Jesus. She's ministry. funding Jesus, and then later, yeah, Herod gets to meet Jesus after Pilate sends it. Right, to him. right, right. Man, it's wild. That yeah, is the, such the, the, the good interconnection thick storytelling. Of it, all. it is honestly it's okay. So continue. You've got Joanna, and then I know less about Susanna and Salumi. I think I'm saying Salumi correctly. Yeah, but yeah, these these three or four, we've kind of created an ensemble of them. Because according to scripture, they were there and they were funding it and they were helping Jesus's ministry move forward. I just think that is so cool. I think it's awesome. Yeah. But anyways, but whenever you're thinking back about like the dynamics of friendship and connection, uh, you know, even back in that day and time. And I remember there was some funny relational motives um, that kind of were hinted at in scripture, yeah. like, you know, the two brothers that were like, Hey, so whenever you go to heaven, can we yeah. like sit by you? Let's and everyone else up. was upset. Yeah. And then John was like, well, I'm the one that he loves. Right. Yeah. And Peter was like, Hey, I believe you're the son of God, but I also don't think you should get crucified. And then he was like, well, you're the devil get behind. Me. Yeah. 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 And it's just funny. Just understanding all of these w- unique friendship dynamics. Totally. That. Whenever you read them, you're like, oh, yeah, that's the Bible. But whenever you really look at them, you're like, oh, wait, I experience these dynamics today in 2024. Yeah. Yeah. If you've ever had a roommate and you've had weird, like unspoken things between you and a roommate, then you've got an understanding of what Jesus and these 12 men are dealing with because they're walking together. They're living together. They're sleeping around the same area. Like it is a cons- that much. If you've ever been on a mission trip and you've been with a, the same group of people for 10, 12 days, or I did one for a month one time, like wow. after that long, you're like, I can take a break. Like, yeah. I'm good with all even people. someone that you truly do love. Yeah. No matter. How, I mean, it, and once you get in a relationship with somebody, even still like that's part of the marriage dynamic is over time stuff shifts and you have to the thing where you can tolerate something for a month because you're on a mission trip or for a week because you're in out of town with someone on a work trip of some kind it goes away because you're like if i don't confront these things it's well this will happen all the time i have to address right. this i have to deal with this i remember i don't know i've just 
in my 20s, I had so many different roommates. And then I had friends who were young women who had a bunch of roommates and they would come tell me about their roommate drama. And I had mine and it was just like I had. A, yeah, I just, <laughs> I'm thinking of all these stories. No, but I'm that's just going good. on and well, on. So this yeah. is what I'm getting. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that in ministry, you see a falling out of friendships or growing sure. apart. And then people decide to leave ministries or they decide yeah. to um, like or maybe they're not working. Maybe they're members. Sure. And they were like, oh, our connect group was this. Yeah. But then something happened. There was a shift. Yeah. And it all comes into dynamics. And so what one thing that we were talking about was mm-hmm. um, about, you know, friendship, disciples <clears throat> and like. Why are are men not saying? Why is it so hard for a man to really talk to another man? Yeah. And be very open. Right. And honest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and it not. It be, and I understand it is embarrassing. Sure. And I know that there's different generations where some things are like. Yeah. Some some individuals believe, well, I just feel like there's certain things that are better left unsaid. Yes. And then whenever there's relationships involved. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So. Go. Yeah, I mean, we were talking about we saw another clip of some kind about individuals in Australia who like the government created these sheds where men would get together and they were assigned tasks to like repair lawnmowers and work on things together and help with carpentry. And it just forced men to start talking to each other because they studied it and realized like a society needs men who are capable of looking at each other and talking to each other. And then as they observe that dynamic, they would notice that it's very, very rare, almost weird for two men to speak to one another facing each other directly. That is so fascinating. With their feet facing So if you're each a dude other. listening to this, think about the next time you talk to someone, <laughs> look at your feet. Yeah. If you're you move to open. adjust directly in front, you'll notice they will switch to sa- stand There's a at an angle. In energy. Yeah, 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 yeah. It'll people will naturally adjust their angle. A lot of men will stand in like maybe that's why the Passover was was painted that way. Maybe all these dudes are on yeah, one side because it was from the side. Yeah. You know, Jesus was probably one of the only people that could like look you in your eyes. Sure. And that's a lot. You that's know? Huge. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But then thinking through like it, if you're a believer and the goal is. I want to be a whole man. I want to be a man of God or whatever. Sure. There's just certain things that you're going to have to confront. Sure. And you see a you see the the push away from men um not not all but like mm-hmm. and and it's gotten a whole lot better. Of course. But yeah. when it comes to relationships and being able to trust one another and yeah. being vulnerable and also holding each other accountable and those things because I will say one thing that Bill Johnson said at conferences he said if you want to know what the devil is scared of, look at what he is attacking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Currently, what the devil is attacking, I don't want to be preacher boy on Go my for soapbox. It. Yeah. Currently, what the devil is attacking is man. Yeah, masculinity. Masculinity. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we see that. Yeah. And, and you guys, you'd have to have your head underneath the rock to, to not believe that masculinity is not being attacked. And I believe that women are powerful, that they can be independent, that mm-hmm. they again, funded Jesus's mm-hmm. ministry, but there is a necessary place yeah. for men to also even call out the man inside of young, young men. Well, let me also say part of the reason he attacks masculinity is because if the devil looks at his grocery list and it says attack men, attack women, attack this, 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 whatever, by attacking men, he can knock out both. Yeah. Cause if he goes, if I attack men, They'll attack women for me. Yeah. I don't need to attack women. And so it's become a cultural thing now where that's the narrative. And there are people who understand that narrative, like the problem. They're right about the problem. They're wrong about the solution. So what what are you saying? Like, what do people say the problem is? The problem is uh, men try to take all the power and lord it over women and children. And in many situations, that has been the case. But that's not because they're men. That's because they're human. So the problem here is then on the other side, they go, the solution is to completely reverse it completely. And be that's a very binary approach to it. That's extremely wrong. Bill Hader, he's a writer. He's from Tulsa. Yeah, Bill Hader was in Barry. Barry, he's done nice. Sorry, not He said something about screenwriting that really applies to society as a whole. He says, if I write a script 
and someone reads it and goes, this relationship between the, the, the husband and wife, it's not working. They are right about the fact that it's not working. What they're going to say next as the solution is always wrong. No, I, I yeah. heard that. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah, you yeah. sent this to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he says they, if they can tell something's wrong, they're, they're right. When they tell you how to fix it, they're wrong. So the most of us. The only way to fix it is by looking at the word of God. That's right. That's, <laughs> no, that's true. It's true. Because then you have to wonder if, if you have binary thinking, and I'm going to say this carefully because I don't want to, I don't want to clip this and make it misunderstood. If you go, okay, men should not be in charge. That's a problem. Women should then just be in charge. I go, okay, so you want the right to make the same mistakes that men did and to do the same atrocities that men have made. Okay. That's like saying. The answer to the atrocities of slavery in the past is to just reverse it and make white people slaves now. And it's like, is that going to be the solution? That's going to if it was so bad, then it's still bad now in any right. category with any race. It's never yeah. a good answer. So all that to say, uh, by attacking masculinity, by deforming it, by concentrating on uh, concentrating it into something negative, you can attack women as well. So I think that's why we need to approach it with a lot of gentleness of like, OK, what's the actual we can tell something's wrong. We can't assume we know the solution, which is where learning comes in. So what would you say is the solution? I mean, for something that that <laughs> massive, the, the, the bottom line of it would be that uh, there is no substitute for a man or woman who fears God in society. And because at that point. You can entrust them with power and they won't decide what to do with it. They will ask God what to do with it. OK, say that one more time. There's no substitute for a man or woman who fears God. And that's because God can trust that person with power because they will not decide what to do with the power. They will ask, what do you want me to do with this? I noticed this, this, this big box of power and authority and impact and influence you've made this whatever we're doing is is popular and, and people will pay attention what do you want us to do with it versus this gets personal now say it. what i'm having to turn the camera on myself lately and look at my own human corruptibility and depravity is am i trying to trick god into giving me power so that i don't need him anymore so what's come to the surface of my heart recently is um, sometimes I fantasize about the future and I have this deep fear that it's not going to happen and I'm, I'm right and I'm wrong. I think that the, the specific things I want to do, I will end up doing. But underneath them, if I investigate for a long enough period of time, there is this thing of, and the reason I will do them is because by that point, I'll be the Lord of my life. And I've had these gentle confrontations with, I want to say, the Holy Spirit lately yeah. being like, you don't understand the purpose of my lordship and mastery over your life is so that I can create intimacy. My lordship creates a covering and a container for there to be intimacy. You've got it backwards. Mm you're trying to get really intimate with me so I will give you lordship. Man, and that's it hits really good. super strong. And so no, I know we're like talking about uppercut. masculinity and all this stuff, but, no, but that's, that's where, where it, it, it starts now. Yeah, it does. It comes down to, are you trying to be the Lord of your own life, man or woman? Yeah. And how, to what length will you go to try? Yes. Because sometimes I catch myself and I go, wow, you're doing this church thing really good, man. Yeah, you're doing the you, Christian people think highly of you. And and it's good that they do because there's fruit and God tells them to pay attention to fruit. But yeah. then he says in first Samuel, but I'm looking at roots. Oh, my goodness. There was a yes. I completely agree with you. Yeah. Go I'm on. Looking go, at go. the roots. Yeah. Um, can. Oh, man. Do you want a Bible? What do you need? Notebook. OK, there's this. It's all right. I think I can remember it. There's okay. a scripture. I just forget the address. Sure. Um, That's fine. It is. Um, Right after Jesus flipped the tables. Yeah. And then he said they were saying something and he said. Um, but he knew what was in their heart. Yeah. Uh, he did. Not, he did not need anyone to, to tell, tell him, him about human nature, about yeah. human nature. That's because right. Because he knew. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, and there's certain versions that are really cool when you read yeah. that. Yeah. Because Jesus knows human nature. That's right. And human nature is 
we're all screwed up. Mm -hmm. And so we're always going to, there's always going to be a temptation to make the wrong decision. Sure. So anyways, now when yeah. you put that in mm -hmm. ministry, yeah. Oh yeah. When you put that at churches and people get so upset at ministries or individuals for doing this yeah. and doing that. And they go on this righteous, whatever. Right. Yeah. I'll point out what's wrong with all y'all point out what's wrong with all of you guys. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, okay, it's only a matter of time. Yeah. Before that happens to you or it's already happened to you. Yeah. And you're just not. This famous. is why. Yeah. Right. No, it's true. <laughs> and so no one knows. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And so I just think, yeah, that is. Um, yeah. So as far as like with human nature, asking those questions and, you know, as I, I was just talking. So Cody, he has a nephew in a class that I coach. So I also help out on the school side. Mm -hmm. We are doing, um, you know, strength training. Yeah. With all of the athletes, fifth through twelfth grade. Well, we go to powerlifting meets now. Yes. Powerlifting is a big deal in Oklahoma. Yeah. I don't know if it's in, in other states. Sure, but there's junior high powerlifting meets. Yeah, and there's high school powerlifting meets, and you go and you compete. Yeah, uh, in the squat, bench, and deadlift, and then they take your top lifts. They they compile them together, and um, you know you can and then there's 13 weight classes so you lift against people in your own weight class mm -hmm. and whatever that total is yeah that that's who wins and yeah. then if it comes down to the wire then they divide your body weight by your total amount incredible and it's yeah. the highest average though. yeah it's like this whole thing yeah yeah well i've probably been to you know maybe 15 of these meets yeah well i take these middle school boys yeah all of them the first meet were terrified hmm. and the whole time yeah. they were looking at all of the other yeah. boys at yeah. all of the other schools and it's held in a gym yeah. and people are seated in this round yeah. and they're all looking. And the whole thing is, is with these and it also was with the high school guys. Mm -hmm. um, and there's also girls that do it. Nice. They're also nervous because they're looking at um, other people and what they wrote down. Yeah. Because everyone's first attempts are up there. Yeah. Like on a screen. Yeah. And then they're like, my attempt is not as big. And I always tell wow. them, I go, I'm just letting you know, some of these kids put down an ego lift. Yeah. And they're going to scratch. Right. Which right. means they're not going to go parallel. Yeah. Or yeah. they're going to do something to mess themselves up. Yeah. And I have to tell them, all that matters is you and that bar. Mm -hmm. It's that weight. Now you can carry and lift that weight. There's a sermon here. This is awesome. Yeah. Like yeah. lift the weight. Yeah. And then Beautiful. if the judge will give you a thumbs up, if you're good or a thumbs down, if mm -hmm. you scratch yeah. and then they'll say, what is your second attempt? And then they enter it in and it goes up on the screen. Yeah. And I go, so before we even go, I have them all do their first attempt. So that way when they see it in competition, mm -hmm. they're not scared. Good. And all I talk about is, you know, um, and they won't care if I say their name. Yeah. I'll say Zane Cooper, you know, uh, Cody's nephew, Ephraim. I'll go Ephraim. All that matters is you in that bar. Nice. Everyone else in here, nothing matters. Yeah. So what is your opening lift? Well, I'm, I'm going to do this. Okay. Uh, and what's your second lift? Well, this, and then they'll say a number and I'll go now. Have you ever done that before? Oh uh, yeah. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's do something that you Mm -hmm. know you can get and yeah. then on that third on that last one yeah we'll go five pounds above what you just got yeah and it's right on that edge and it's learning how to yeah um work with these young men yeah to push them to a, an extent to where they go i just did something that i didn't think i could do yeah and i was like and you did it for you yeah and whenever you have them focusing on themselves all of a sudden they begin to feel better about themselves now we're going to our second powerlifting meet mm, tomorrow yeah and they already have experienced the fear and everything they've got the jitters out and they go okay so my first attempt is this my first my second attempt is this and now it's like they're having fun Beautiful. but it's because now they're very sure of themselves that's awesome as a young man you yeah. just have to be sure of yourself that's a big deal and then as you get older yeah you look where people um, you know, embezzle funds sure. or you look at people who are sleeping around whenever they're married or, mm -hmm. or, or doing certain things behind the scenes. Yeah. It's because they don't fear God and yeah. they don't believe in themselves. Ego lifting. It's their ego lifting. Interesting. 
And so yeah. anyways, it is just an interesting thing when it comes to men. Now, again, I can't speak for women. Sure. But, you know, it is. And, and so if you're looking for that, you should probably listen to another podcast because yeah. I'm not going to pretend. <laughs> yeah. To even know that. <laughs> but for those of you who are listening, for those of you who are listening, as we are coming to a close today, I think it is just very important to know like uh, that whatever the devil is afraid of, that's what he's attacking that's right. in your life. Yeah. All right. And then behind the scenes, you can look at yourself in the mirror and not get your three year plan confused with your 10 year plan. Mm -hmm. Cause what God can do in 10 years is absolutely insane. Yeah, definitely. And sometimes we think our 10 year plan should be here in three years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But like if we're all guaranteed biblically in scripture, we're actually allowed to live to 120. That's what the Bible says. <laughs> yeah. If you're in it for the long haul, then you're like, okay, I'm not going to become close to God so that he can give me something. Right. And so that I can be my own God. Yeah. You know, when it's time. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. In God's timing. Sure. He will put the weight on my back in which I can squat. That's right. And when that happens, I'll say, okay, yeah, I got this medal. Yeah for placing sure. for winning now sure. what do i do with this power that's right um as opposed to i need this power in order to yeah. know yeah. that i'm important that's right i agree yeah what it comes down to even the fear of god part is trust, trust. do you tr do you trust him uh do you trust that if to use your metaphor if the the person who's been training you every day in the gym do you trust that they did it correctly like this meat doesn't have to feel different than being in training. And yeah. then the other thing is if you, the extent to which you trust uh, your coach, your s experience, the process that you've been in, that's how much you'll enjoy it. Yeah. And the goal is to enjoy it. Yes. Because the number, and I'm saying this sensitively, the number of, of successful Olympic athletes who have in the aftermath of their gold medal taken their own life yeah. is, is, a, is alarmingly high. There was a documentary about it. I don't remember the name, and I actually wouldn't say it if I did because it ends really poorly. They just talk about this problem, and then they go, yeah, it sucks. <laughs> and the credits roll, and you're like, what up? Whoa, what else? Life but it's the idea the hope a, of achievement yeah. outside of enjoying it with the people you're around. This is why in Second Peter, God talks about this long process of like add to your faith, supplement it with moral excellence, godly character, patient endurance. The last two are brotherly affection or sisterly affection and love for everyone, which you think you would start there, but it, it's actually something that you work your way up to a genuine love for everybody. I am finally, I can say this with no shame. Finally at 31 after three decades in church, this is the first season of my life that, um, I genuinely love people. I don't even know. And I, I feel brotherly affection for them. And life, life is hitting me very differently. And it's coming into the extent, and I know we're wrapping up here, it, it comes to the extent that I actually trust. Because that whole thing I'm saying about where you're like, I'm gonna earn enough and I'll ego lift and I'll, and maybe if I'm wealthy, people will think this about me. It's the idea of perception and everything for a man. And do I have what it takes and am I enough, et cetera? And do women like me and I can prove it because these women wanna sleep with me because I lied to them about how much money I, it's all that. Mm -hmm. And it comes down to, um, you're trying to trick people or trick God. If you're in a church context, trick God into giving you this life that you want. The problem with that is that it is all based on a lie that he doesn't want that for you already. Mm. I have to trick you, God, into giving me the life that I want from you because I'm not convinced that you want to give it to me already. When on his side, he's like, actually, I, it says in Luke 12, 32, it says, don't be afraid. Yeah. If he said, please is my father to give you his kingdom, to give you a life lived oh, by his power. That's wonderful. So to land on that, to really trust it, it will break you yeah. because brokenness is not wanting to be worshiped. And it's really beautiful when you now know why you shouldn't be. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's the first yeah. half of brokenness is I don't want anyone to worship me. The second half is and I know why they shouldn't. Yes. And as I f stare that in the face lately, I go, OK, it does come down to tr I do trust that God feels when you do that work backwards from it. You fear God. You know what to do with power. You know what to do with your talent. And then your masculinity or femininity land in the place they should. And next thing you know, you're enjoying your life, the process, 
the people you're with. You actually love everybody. That's so beautiful. I agree. That's so beautiful. Thank you, Arvin, for sharing that. Yeah, and, and thank dude. you guys for listening. You know, a lot of the things that we talked about uh, are actually in Pastor Paul's book, Mind Games. Yeah, dude, check so, it out. So, Pastor Paul's book, Mind Games, it's not just for people who are like, I'm crazy or I'm bipolar or no. I'm depressed. I want to commit suicide. Yeah, if you have a I'm mind. I'm not making <laughs> saying flippant statements. No, it's true. But it's really for, it's really if you are wanting to go to a new level just in your life. Yeah. We want to encourage you to check out um, Pastor Paul Doherty's book, Mind Games. You can get it on Amazon or yeah. pauldoherty.org. Wherever books are sold. Ever, Yeah, wherever, wherever. books are sold. Wherever. Hey, we love you. Thank you so much. Thank we'll you. We'll see you next time. Bye. What'd you think? Did we get it? That was awesome. <laughs>